Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and today I will be doing a video on the design of Uncharted 2. Um, I guess this applies to all of the Uncharted games because they're all pretty much the same as far as game mechanics go anyway. Um, so if you haven't played uh, any of the Uncharted games, uh, they're basically all um, a sort of action platformer where the action is a third person shooter with a um, cover mechanic so it's similar to most games which has a lot of chest high walls everywhere um, I will just show you I have a mix of video and images um, so here as you can see the platforming is pretty well made actually because all of the interactable objects as well as the sort of edges you can move across are all or they tend to be highlighted so they stick out in color or uh, contrast from the non-interactable environment um, which means that the platforming is fairly basic and the challenge isn't so much finding the right path as it is about actually accomplishing the platforming bits um, then you also have a bit of a small sort of stealth game I suppose where um, as you come to a new area you will tend to not have any weapon um, for mostly story reasons like you're flying around the world doing stuff um, so as you come to a new area you will have a bit of a stealth mechanic uh, where none of these guys there are more of them up here uh, have spotted you yet which means that if you um, attack them with melee you will perform a sort of one-shot kill as you can see in this case you basically throw him off the mountain uh, which also means that you will be able to pick up his weapon uh, because as you start with the basic sort of pistol you won't be able to do much damage and this is an easy way of making sure that you kill something um, which means that you have access to the higher level guns basically um, but this in this case this actually woke up the other guards in some cases you will be able to perform several of these sort of stealth kills in a row um, but yeah as you can see here I'm being shot at because the screen goes red and then you start the basic sort of stealth um, game or the cover game where you can see this is a chest high wall basically but in this case it's crates um, and like some uh, platform action games like uh, Devil May Cry for instance you uh, or in Uncharted you will be doing some of the platforming while fighting as well um, because you have to move around cover and stuff like that um, so yeah you can see this guy was flipping around you can climb on top, top of the boxes to the right here whoops I'll just go back a little um, you can climb up on top of the vehicle and hide behind this reasonably chest high wall um, to keep fighting um, so the basic aspects of the game is basically the platforming which is fairly easy and you will not tend to die much from the platforming um, so you basically run through it and because it's so easy to spot the platforms like I'm showing in the next clip here um, like the platforms are so easy to make out the path is in most cases fairly obvious um, and then you have the stealth game which is really minor because it only comes up maybe let's say between 10 and 20 times in the game where the enemies uh, don't know you're around um, allowing you to stealth kill them and then you have the sort of core fighting which is the cover based shooting uh, so in this case you have a sort of blue green uh, walls instead of the ice that was in the uh, ice level or the snow um, so here I'm also showing off the stealth mechanic um, so this guy makes no noise if you take him down and it also gives you a gun 
Uh, I already had one that I picked up earlier. Um, so yeah, there are random guns lying around. And then um, there's this guy who's moving around. The problem with this stealth game is you don't really have any sort of stealth tools except for the um, the kill, the basic one-shot kill. Um, you don't really have any tools to see where they're looking or um, basically pay attention to their movement paths and stuff like that. Which means that the stealth game is... Um, it's kind of hard to kill more than one or two um, before getting spotted. And you also have no chance of hiding the bodies or anything like that. So, yeah, the stealth game is, sure, it's there, but you won't be using it much. Um, you can basically just start shooting as well if you want to. Um, which means that in some cases you will have to start fighting with a weak pistol. It works. But, yeah, I don't know. I'd rather just keep the gun from the last fight that he sort of carries it around. Um, this is also a really weird part of the game. Because um, you get to places like this one where the platforming is obvious. And he even says, I'm either going to bleed out or I'm going to climb out. I'm actually going to back up a little. As you can see here, I'm looking towards the back. I basically spawned over here um, by the train crash. So I'm looking backward. No one is seeing me. I start climbing. And then, whoops, suddenly people spawn right behind you and kill you in one shot. Um, this is basically scripted things that uh, make sure that you have to fight enemies because you can't really run past anything. It's just not meant to happen. Um, so even though you get the possibility to climb up there and he even does the sort of voice cue, you're really not meant to um, meant to move on. Um, but yeah, the visual design is obviously amazing. Most of these games are um, they've basically gone out and said that yeah we thought up some pretty cool environments and then we sort of made a weak ass story to make sure that you were transported between the different cool areas um, because they don't really have much to do with one another um, but yeah as you can see here lots of chest high cover some full body cover um, then you have sort of trains on top of each other which means that you can run along um, basically, uh, you can't really see it, but there are windows in this one, so you can hide between the windows or beneath them. And the arenas tend to be uh, really cool. Um, they're laid out in pretty great ways, actually. And the fighting is obviously the best part of the game, um, or the most well-made, I suppose. Um, you might not have spotted it, but there are also sort of hidden items uh, that you can pick up that are sort of flashing. Um, this is basically currency to unlock uh, specific skins and sort of uh, um, special items. I'm not sure if it's just for multiplayer or single player. Um, I actually haven't bought anything at all. So here's another uh, image uh, or a clip of uh, fighting and the game tends to do this a lot where you basically see a cutscene or accomplish something um, and then the game sort of throws you in a terrible situation um, which means that you don't necessarily have to um, you don't like walk from A to B and if you kill en all enemies uh, it will be a safe area instead it's more like you go to B and then enemies come from all sides and sort of try to kill you. As you can see here, one guy jumped down from the cliff on the left side. And this is basically what makes it a good sh uh, shooter or a good cover-based shooter. Um, there are three essential parts, basically. Number one, um, enemies that try to shoot you from afar. Um, number two, grenades. And number three, um, people that try to flank you basically. Um, the people that try to shoot you from afar are the sort of core because 
Um, they are basically the targets as well as doing some damage if you don't kill them fast. The grenades is what makes you force you um, out of cover basically. And then there are these guys which flank you. Um, so this means that if you have uh, some sort of scary target, there are sort of sniping enemies as well that will shoot you um, doing one shot kills if you don't hide within a certain amount of time. I'm not sure what it is. Um, so there are scary enemies far away. There are scary enemies. Um, some of them have shotguns for instance which do a ton of damage. And some of them have shields, riot shields. Um, so they only have a pistol but they are much much harder to kill. Um, and then as I said there are the grenades which force you out of cover. I didn't actually have any good examples in this clip because they're actually throwing the grenades um, onto the next level outside. But yeah, you actually have boxes of grenades in this one. This is basically the tutorial sort of for grenades. Um, but yeah, enemies, they spawn on the top left here and jump down. They spawn on the right side and they will flank you both on the left side and the right side. And as you can see they dive to cover when you throw your own grenades, um, which is a sort of distraction. Um, so this means that the combat is much more dynamic than for instance in uh, Bioshock Infinite. Um, because in that game the enemies are mostly, uh, they mostly stay put, so they don't try to flank you and they don't really spawn in as you're fighting um, which means that you don't have to keep covering new angles and they also have no grenades which means that you can stay in the same cover for basically an entire fight. So I'd say actually that the Uncharted games even though they're much older have a better cover based shooter game than a newer game like Bioshock Infinite and that's also um, part of why that is a much duller game because um, I mean Bioshock Infinite it doesn't have any platforming and the fighting is its only sort of core mechanic and it still does it badly. But yeah, um, the fighting in Uncharted is lots of fun actually. Um, you will tend to die um, a few times in most of these sort of big fights because you don't know where the enemies are spawning and things like that. Or you will just tend to do something stupid and get one shot by some guy with a shotgun. There are also these pistola pistols which are basically uh, two shot shotgun pistols. Um, there are also interactable objects like these gas canisters that you can shoot and they explode. Um, but you don't really tend to use them much. Um, another part of the game is a sort of melee fighting mechanic where you just move up and you mash a button and then when they attack you you click another button. Um, as you can see in this example I actually lived which is a real surprise because if you try to melee something and they have just a single friend with them the friend tends to kill you. Like uh, you can't really get away from a melee fight. Um, before getting killed. So this was actually a big surprise for me. I just wanted to show off the sort of melee mechanic. And here you can also see there are chest high walls in the middle and there are high walls on the sides. You can jump up and take cover up here. Um, there are different levels in most of these arenas. Uh, so the layouts are good and the combat is pretty good. And here you actually have one of the... whoops, I skipped ahead too fast. You have one of the, go back, uh, sort of tougher enemies. Uh, the guy with the helmet here, it's just a tougher sort of shotgun enemy that will keep moving towards you. And you basically have to shoot him in the head once to remove the helmet and then once again to uh, headshot them and kill them, basically. So when you have these sort of advancing what the hell was that? Um, advancing enemies that are scary and then you have the hiding enemies which aren't that scary but still keeps you sort of covered. Um, the gameplay just becomes more interesting because you have to make sh 
selections between um, fighting the guys that are close to you or fighting something far away. Um, yeah, this is uh, sort of more examples of the layout. This is the uh, really early stages of the game. Uh, but what happens is you basically spawn at the bottom. I think you come in from here and then you move around the level and even though you might move out to the side it's basically just to get higher up which means that as you're f fighting um, at the top here you're basically seeing areas below you um, where you used to be so the layout is really cool in different levels and while I don't think you can jump down here uh, because the fall is probably going to kill you um, you can still see the entire area um, which I think is pretty cool so the game isn't super uh, linear in its design it's more of a height based design um, of course depending on different areas um, but yeah. move on to the next part yeah this is just another example of how the uh, different areas look really different and they're super good at the environment art so this is just some sort of really old temple now uh, Mr. Drake here isn't really respectful of the sort of ancient cultures because he tends to break everything and the rest of the video here uh, you can't see it but it's just like a minute it's just basically him breaking everything everything he touches turns to shit is one of the lines in the game and it actually tends to be true um, and this is really what bothers me most about the game because it's trying to create sort of tension um, where it's more exciting but tension doesn't work if everything breaks like um, the game is actually cheating a bit because of uh, you playing it with a controller uh, because the rumble packs that provide um, a different level of feedback to your hands actually gives you a bit more tension just because of the shaking in your hands than if you would play it on a PC for instance but yeah this is really silly um, you're basically climbing the entire length of this uh, former bridge and everything breaks constantly and I really can't take the game seriously um, if you saw the sort of train example in the beginning here this one you actually climb up this train first in the sort of intro and then once again later in the game and everything breaks and I hate it I just think it's sort of silly um, because to create tension you must have sort of calm situations in between the jumping and when you basically expect everything to break you no longer have any sort of tension you're just going oh yay this next platform is going to break and this is going to break for the entire length of the game um, well I did um, so yeah, the basic mechanics is really cool, but the sort of details like the uh, melee fighting, like the stealth game, aren't that polished. Um, it doesn't bother you as much because it comes up so rarely. Um, but there's also aspects like um, weird boss fights. There's one on the train, and there's another one with a sort of gorilla goat monster um, that are yeah they're fairly silly to be honest because they're not really using the core mechanics um, the train is better than the monster one but I just thought they were kind of silly gimmicks um, so the boss fights and everything breaking and no stealth mechanics is basically what uh, puts the game down but on the other hand it looks great it, the platforming plays great even though it's not much of a challenge and 
most importantly the core fighting is great um, which basically makes the games um, the stories are really silly but it doesn't doesn't really bother me because I don't really care all that much um, yeah another point completely irrelevant but if you saw my video on Mark of the Ninja last week it's actually in the humble indle bun indie bundle 9 so if you want to play the game and I really recommend it you can buy it for as little or as much as you want and uh, if you pay more than 457 so for five dollars you also get uh, faster than light and fez um, which I think are pretty cool um, I haven't played fez but it looks like a pretty cool mechanic to be honest and if you just pay five bucks for Mark of the Ninja, um, I'd say just that game makes the bundle worth it. So check it out and thanks for watching. This has been the design of Uncharted 2. Over and out.